happen in his life. And so we now get down here to chapter number 4, and we look here tonight at verse number 1 is where we're going to begin reading. And the Bible says this, And as they spake unto the people, the priest and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead, and they laid hands on them and put them in the hold unto the next day, for it was now evening tide. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. So when we begin to, to look there at verse number 1, uh, as we be kind of just study this, these, four, uh, these four verses, uh, verse number 4, or chapter number 4, verse 1 says, And they spake unto the people. All right, who, is it, who are they? They are Peter and John. Peter and John began to speak unto the people. Now, we go back and we find who those people are when you look at chapter number 3. And we find that in chapter number 3, we find right here that in verse number 12, we read it last Wednesday night, it says, And Peter, and when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? So we know that they that spake is Peter and John. We know who they were talking to were the people of Israel, as he refer, referenced to the men of Israel, but it was the people of Israel. There were men, there were women uh, that were gathered around there, there in the crowd. So we find here that Peter and John began to speak to the people of Israel that were gathered in the city of Jerusalem just right outside the temple, that they had just witnessed the healing of this lame man and so as they began to speak, and as Peter had just preached, he'd give them an invitation to repent of their sin, to be converted, to, be, uh, to accept Christ as their Savior. We find right here that the next part says, And as they spake unto the people, the priest and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them. So we find here the priest. Now we all know who the priests are, right? The priests were mainly made up of the Levites. And we learn that from the Old Testament. The priest is the Levite family. That's what they are. They come from the tribe of Levi. The Only the tribe of Levi could be the priest, according to the Word of God in the Old Testament. We know that Aaron was of the tribe of Levi. Aaron was the high priest, which was the brother of Moses. But we know the priests were there. And it says, and the captain of the temple. Now, who was the captain of the temple? That is considered the temple police or the temple guards. So we find the priest, the captain of the temple, which would be the temple guards, the temple priest. And, or, and we find there the Sadducees. Now, who were the Sadducees? Well, the Sadducees was another religious uh, group. And we know that they rivaled the Pharisees. Now, the Sadducees and the Pharisees didn't agree on everything. Uh, one thing that the Sadducees did not believe was they did not believe in a resurrection. The Sadducees did not believe in a bodily resurrection. So, therefore, they did not believe that Jesus Christ had arose from the dead. So we find here that the priests are there, the captain of the temple, the police guards. Uh, we find that the Sadducees are there. So what we've got here is we've got a religious group of people, right? We've got the religious crowd that's there. And what do they begin to do? As Peter and John, as they begin to speak to the people, these guys come up. And the Bible says they came up on them. Or some translations say they confronted them. So as the Bible says that they came upon them, verse 2 says this, being grieved, or the ESV and the CSB says, or being greatly annoyed, being grieved that they taught the people. So the Sadducees, the priest, and the temple guard, the police there, they were annoyed, they were grieved that Peter and John were preaching and teaching the people. But not only that, but it was what they were preaching. It was what they were teaching and what they were sharing. And look what it says the next part of verse 2. And it says, And they pre and preached 
through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. So what they were preaching was the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They were preaching that Jesus had indeed arose from the grave. He was uh, the resurrected Savior. They were preaching Jesus. They were preaching His resurrection from the dead. And so that annoyed this re religious crowd. It grieved them. They didn't like it. That it, it upset them that Peter and John were there preaching about Christ. So what we find right here is verse number 3 goes on to tell us. It says, and what did they do? And it says, and they laid hands on on them they seized them they captured them and they put them in the hold or prison or jail under the next day for it was now evening so this was taking place in the evening so they come down there the religious crowd they they lay hands on peter and john they capture them they seize them and they put them in jail they put them in prison now why do they put them in jail why do they put them in prison they put them in there for preaching about Jesus Christ and his resurrection. They were captured and imprisoned for preaching Christ and the resurrection. We find right here that maybe for the first time in the book of Acts, we find that Peter and John faced their first opposition. They were facing opposition. They were being opposed. Why? For preaching Christ. For preaching Jesus. For preaching that Jesus truly did arise the third and glorious day. Now you think about that. These priests that were there, they were, they were religious, right? I mean, we're talking about these guys. We read that, but do we comprehend what these guys were? These were men that were set apart. They were sanctified. There was a process that these priests had to go through. You, just anybody could not be a priest. You had to be almost as what they would consider without any kind of birth defect or birth deformity. You had to be almost perfect as they would think or consider. And you had to be of the bloodline and tribe of Levi. And so you would go through this process and you would go through this sanctification process just to be able to be a priest. And what a priest would do, a priest could have been really maybe one of the most humblest and lowliest jobs in the temple or in the house of the Lord because all the priest was there to do was serve in the temple. They were just to serve in the house of the Lord. They were just to serve God. They were just to be a servant. So they were considered really the lowliest or the lowest of the jobs. But these men were religious men. These were the guys that were going through and they were performing the sacrifices and the offerings daily. They understood the Levitical law. They understood the reasoning why they made the sacrifices and why the atonements were made. They understood the Old Testament way. They understood the Word. They understood the law of God. And then you've got the Sadducees, that they're another religious group, but yet they could not agree, and they did not agree or believe that they didn't believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They didn't even believe really in a general resurrection or a bodily resurrection. So it made these guys, they were annoyed, they were, they were aggravated, they were grieved because this teaching and this preaching was going forth. So what did they do? They said, all right, we're going to take care of this situation and we're going to cast them into jail. We're going to put them in prison for preaching Christ. We find right here the next part. What did it say? Verse number 4. It says, how be it. And when you look at that word, how be it, that's an important word because it also means how be it or but. Many of them which heard the word believed. Did you catch that? Although Peter and John were being opposed and they faced opposition and they were thrown into prison, although they were preaching that and they were facing a little opposition from the religious crowd and they were seized and, and imprisoned, 
that even though that had happened, the Bible said there were many of them which heard the word believe. When they heard the word of God as it was preached and taught by Peter and John, they began to believe that Jesus really did arise from the grave. They believed in the resurrection of Jesus. They believed the words that Peter and John were preaching and that they were saying they believed. And the Bible even goes on to say, look what it says, and the number of the men was about 5,000. 5,000 people believed on Jesus Christ and his resurrection they believed the gospel from the preaching of John and Peter that day but yet they had faced some opposition and they were thrown into jail you think about this for just a minute when I begin to read that it said when they what really stood out to me in verse 4 was when they heard the word they believed and the Lord led me back to the book of Romans chapter 10. If you want to turn over there with me tonight, let's turn over and read Romans chapter 10. And this is very familiar. Most of you probably know this tonight, and you, you know the verses before it. I'm not going to read the verses before it, but what the verse I'm going to read is verses 14 through 21. But I really want to, uh, I really I think what we're going to look at mostly is just verse 14 and maybe 15. But it says right there in verse 14 in chapter 10, it says, how then, this is the Apostle Paul, and what he's talking about is Israel's rejection of Christ. How they did not believe on Christ through faith. And he says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Now to help us understand that, what is he talking about? Well, you go back to that famous verse that we know of, that, that most of us know, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth of the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. But then Paul gets down to verse 14. He says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? He asks that question. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard. And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good, uh, glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, and their words into the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. But Isaiah is very bold, and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that ask not after me. But to Israel saith, all day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. But going back to verse 14, when he asked that question, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? You know what this verse right here teaches me and, and speaks to me today when I read over this? This verse right here in verse 14 and the first part of 15 screams the Great Commission. It screams the Great Commission because why? It says, then how shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? Church, you and I have a job to do today. We've been commissioned. We've been saved to go and to share the gospel to a lost and dying world. We are to share the gospel with our neighbors, with our co-workers, with our family, with the people outside the four walls of this church and into this city. 
We are, we are to tell them and share and teach them about Jesus Christ and share the gospel with them. And listen, these people, how can they believe if they've never heard? And if they never, if they've not heard, then they must need somebody to tell them, right? They need a preacher. They need somebody that's been saved by the grace of God. It don't have to just be a preacher. It can be a Christian, a born-again believer, a child in God. You can share your testimony with somebody. You see, we all, we think about this, and I believe it gets down to these simple things. You see, when we are spending time with Jesus, and when we spend time with the Lord, and when we have a personal, daily walk with Jesus where we're reading his word and we're in prayer and man we we have a desire to spend time and be with the Lord because you see when we are intimate with the Lord and we're spending time with the Lord and we're in relationship with him and we're in his word you see it's not so much man what can I do for Jesus today no you see what that turns into is when you're spending time with the Lord and when you're with the Lord and man you've been in his presence and you've been in his word listen my friend he is real and he is living and when you've spent some time with the Lord that's going to just come as an overflow of what Jesus is doing in your heart and what Jesus is doing in your life because believe me when you spend time with the Lord you're going to want to tell somebody about what Jesus is showing you in his word when you spend time with the Lord you're going to want to tell somebody about what he's teaching you and what he's leading you and what he's calling you to do you see ministry comes as just an overflow of what Jesus is doing in your life and how is that it's when you spend time with the Lord and you see Peter and John here we know they were just spending time with the Lord and Jesus was working in and through them when he healed this lame man and then they begin to preach the gospel and 5,000 souls were saved when they heard the word and they believed. Church, it gets back to you and me. We have a job to go to those people that have never heard the word of God. How can they believe on somebody that they've never even heard of? It's up to you and it's up to me to go to them and share the gospel give them the word and when they hear the word then they can believe in, the, in their heart that Jesus Christ is Lord then that confession with the mouth comes then they can be saved and come to know Christ as their Savior and as their Lord we find right here 5,000 were saved as they were opposed and thrown in prison I want to read this to you. I, I, I get the uh, voice of the martyrs in the mail. And on June the 29th, 2024, is set aside a day of Christian martyr. And the reason why is in June of 2014, militants from the self-proclaimed Islamic State, ISIS, advanced across Syria and northern Iraq. And they entered each village. They marked Christians' homes and businesses with the letter N, which means Nazarene. This symbol served to identify and threaten Christians who then had a difficult decision to make. Convert to Islam, leave the area, or be killed. More than 100,000 Christians were forced to flee in the stifling heat. Most escaped with only the clothes on their back, and many died on the road that were or taken by ISIS. Separated from their loved ones, these bold Christians refused to deny Christ. They were willing to give up everything for the Savior who had given his life for them. There's an interesting story, and it's the featured story of the month in the Voice of the Martyrs, and it's about a young lady by the name of Twin. Twin was from a, pr a place called... Uh, Eruth, Eruth, Eruth tree 
and it was a, a place in Africa where she served as a prisoner for 16 years. And in this 16 years that she spent in prison, she was not only arrested once, but she was arrested twice. She was set free. The first time she was arrested as a Christian, she was arrested because she went to a secret church. And she was meeting with other Christian brothers and sisters in Christ. And as they were meeting, there was a group of people that were there from the state, the government officials. And they got the names of each one of those Christians that had come to that secret Bible church meeting. And the next day, they began to rest one by one. And she spent time in prison, and her father had come, and he began to beg, and he began to plead, and he began to ask her, he said, please, sign this paper, sign this release. And what this paper was, and she didn't know what it was at the time, but he was just trying to get her just to sign the paper, sign the paper. And he finally got her to sign that paper, and what she signed was this, is that she would no longer attend any more secret church meetings, or she would no longer talk or share about Jesus Christ ever again. And when she got out of prison, when she realized how she was released and released on her terms, and when she found out, when she was handed that piece of paper that she had signed her name to saying that she would no longer talk about Christ or she would no longer meet and gather with other believers of, of Jesus Christ, she went home into her room and she began to pray and she began to cry out to the Lord and she began to ask the Lord to forgive her and to cleanse her and to forgive her for making such a decision that she didn't know that she was making unknowingly and the by, and the story goes that she took that piece of paper and she laid it on her bed and she took her Bible and laid it beside it. And as she began to pray, the Holy Spirit began to lead her to put her hand on which one that she was going to choose. And she had to make a decision that day whether she was going to choose the Word of God and choose to stand and share and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and to tell people about what He had done in her life or she could choose her father, her mother, her family, her job, her position in the government, all those things. And the, the, at that moment, as she began to pray, she said, I'm going to make my choice that I'm going with God. I'm going to choose Christ because Jesus gave his life for me. Jesus gave everything for me. You see, these people, they understood what it meant to be persecuted. They understood what it meant to face opposition. And when we read the story about Peter and John I think sometimes we can read over it and it don't sink in but sometimes when we read a story about somebody that happened maybe just less than 20 years ago in a different country in this world kind of more present day and we see that this is really happening that people every day are making the choice whether or not they're going to serve Christ and follow Jesus faithfully or they're going to denounce their faith but my friend we see here as she said, I'm going to continually share Jesus. And she went and she told everybody she knew about the Lord. But yet she was arrested again and she served 16 years in prison. And she faced heartache. She faced challenges. She faced beatings and all kinds of things. But her faith only grew stronger in Christ. And because of that, there were many that come to know Jesus as their Savior and as their Lord. See, to get it in a per perspective here tonight is this. Peter and John really didn't care that they had been thrown in prison. They had one thing on their mind, and that was the kingdom of God. And that's all they really cared about, was making Jesus known and preaching the gospel and allowing Christ to live in and through them daily in their lives. And Jesus Christ has saved each and every one of us, and that's what he desires to do, is to live in and through us daily. So I encourage you this evening, allow the Lord to live in and through you, and to share the gospel with those that have not yet heard the gospel. And I think sometimes it's very comfortable for us to sit back and say, well, everybody I know, or everybody I work with, or my neighbors, I, I'm sure they know the Lord. Well, you never know until you ask them. Have you 
ask them? Have you asked them, hey, do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Do you know Christ? Are you following Him? Not the old question is, where do you go to church? Because it's not about where you go to church. It's, are you following Jesus Christ? And do you know Him as your personal Savior? Has He saved your soul? As the old saying, when the rubber meets the road, that's what matters. It's when we get down to the understanding and knowing where people's eternity, where they're going to spend eternity, where, what road are they on? We need to have that desire to take the gospel to those people that have not yet heard it and not had that opportunity to believe. Share the gospel, church, with those around you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word tonight. Father, I, I know that, Father, there's times in our life, Lord, and Father, when we are trying to follow you, that, Lord, we're going to face opposition. And, Lord, it may not be the same type of opposition that Peter and John faced with prison. It may not be the same type of opposition that twin faced having to spend 16 years in a prison in Africa. But, Lord, there will be opposition for trying to follow you. And, Lord, I pray that, Father, when we do face that, that, Lord, you would encourage and strengthen our faith. And, Father, I pray tonight that, Lord, you would stir in our hearts and our lives. And, Lord, give us a desire, Father, to go to those that have never heard the gospel. And, Lord, help us to go and share the gospel with them. That, Lord, they would have the opportunity to hear because how can they put their faith in something that they've never heard? Or how can they believe in something that they've never heard? And your word tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing from the word of God. So Lord, help us that have been saved and called and commissioned and sent. Help us to go and share the gospel to those people that we're nearest to every day. That, Father, they would have the opportunity to hear your word, to put their faith, their trust, their belief on you. And that, Lord, they would believe in their heart, confess with their mouth, and, Lord, become a follower of you, Lord Jesus. We love you, we thank you, and we praise you. And all this we ask in your name. Amen. As we stand to our feet this evening, if we feel the need to come and pray, uh, the altar's open. I encourage you to do that tonight as they... Come together and get a song. Uncertain. 
there in Romans chapter 10 where you know we know the apostle Paul was called to go to the Gentiles and we know that as Paul and Peter and the, the church there in Jerusalem they kind of made an agreement to pack Peter and them said hey we'll take care of the and preach the gospel to the Jews and you go to the Gentiles and we'll you know work that way so they had their their calling or where they were going but it goes to show you the heart of the apostle paul not only would he have a calling and a heart to go to the gentile people but paul still had a heart for his people his family and in roman chapter 10 says brethren my heart's desire and prayer to god for israel is that they might be saved man that was his heart his heart was to see his brothers sisters his family saved and come to know Christ. He knew his calling, knew where he was to go, but man, he still had that heart and that desire and that prayer to see Israel saved. Amen? Amen. I encourage us. That ought to encourage us tonight. See our family, our brothers, our people saved, the people we know come to know Christ as their Savior. Anybody tonight got a testimony or word, anything on your heart you feel led to say or do this evening? else got a praise or anything on your heart? Sure, I'm going to ask y'all to remember a little boy. I don't know him personally, but um, he's three years old. He had an accident yesterday. He ran into a big vehicle. Um, mm -hmm. To remember the little boy and his family, he's doing okay. He's taking care of him. But remember the, the driver of the vehicle. Um, he's having a real hard time. Sure. Let's remember this. Anybody else? certainly been good to be in the Lord's house and uh, encourage everybody. I hope and pray that we'll all have a good rest of the week and Lord willing we'll be back on Sunday morning for Sunday school at 10, worship at 11 and uh, encourage somebody, invite somebody to come be with you this week in church. Uh, encourage somebody, talk to somebody about the Lord Jesus, share the gospel, evangelize and witness to someone this week and, and uh, if God gives you that open door, he gives open doors every day. And uh, if you'll just walk through them, if we could have our eyes open, that we'll just try our best just to walk through those doors that the Lord opens up for us. He gives them to us. So be praying for that. Uh, remember Vacation Bible School. Remember all the requests that's been mentioned here in prayer. I'm going to ask if Cheryl would dismiss us tonight in prayer. Once again, we ask you to forgive us and go with us.